Everywhere you see a plant on the planet, below ground, there's an incredibly complex and biodiverse community of bacteria and fungi and archaea and viruses and soil animals and a ton of other stuff living below ground. And all of that stuff in soil is really what drives the nutrient recycling and many other functions that are critical to supporting plant life above ground. Now, we've documented huge declines in plant diversity, huge decline in animal biodiversity on the planet for the past century. We just really don't know what's going on below ground because we really haven't had the tools to monitor it in the same way. That's totally changed in the last 10 years. And what we're beginning to see is a market. We're seeing places where we clear cut forests, massive declines in the fungi that form a symbiosis with the roots of those trees that are critical to how they access growth living resources. We're seeing where we practice intensive chemical agriculture with heavy tillage, wildly different communities of fungi and bacteria in those farms compared to farms that practice different, more organic or regenerative practices. So there's more and more evidence that we're losing and massively disrupting this below ground microbial life. So to start addressing this problem, first we need to know what we have and what we're losing. And to do that, we need to build the baseline. We need to pull together samples of microbiome biodiversity across the planet, map the biodiversity of bacteria and fungi and everything else that lives in the soil so we know it's at risk. Second, when we restore ecosystems, we often go and plant vegetation, plant a tree, or we create conditions that allow it to recruit naturally and naturally regenerate. We rarely think to ask, are, is that below ground microbial biodiversity there waiting for them? More and more research is showing is if you take an active approach to microbiome restoration, you can actually speed recovery of the entire ecosystem. So bringing in bacteria and fungi along with the plants and animals into ecosystem restoration is a huge lever in protecting this biodiversity. And finally, managed landscapes are probably 50% of the arable land on Earth. It's a huge footprint. Any way we can build biodiversity back into those systems is really a win. We may have selected a lot of variety out of the above ground. There's potential to keep the below ground wild. And by doing so, we may actually be able to achieve a lot of the things we ask chemical inputs to do right now. And so that's the real power of microbes and microbial biodiversity managed landscapes. One way we reintroduce microbial biodiversity into the landscape is through soil transplants or soil inoculation. And to explain this, we like to draw an analogy to the Human Microbiome Project. So we know the bacteria in your stomach play a huge role in your health, and if you lose key bacterial biodiversity from your stomach, you can get really sick. But you can take a bacterial community from a healthy person, move it into a sick person, and that's essentially ecosystem restoration for their body. We do the same thing, but for the forest. We find sick forest that's missing microbial biodiversity below ground. We go to a healthy forest, and we take soil. And that soil contains all those living organisms. And so to do that in the field, we use about like a handful of soil, so smaller than the size of your fist. However, as we scale this up, we're working with smaller trees. We're working with tree nurseries. So a lot of these trees get born in the tree nursery. They're little baby trees growing in a small amount of soil. Uh, and if we do it there, we can use much, much less. So like this, this tube is about 10 milliliters. Right now we're working with this and we're trying to get it down to about here so you're only using that much soil. And that really changes our ability to scale. 